All right, folks. Uh, let's talk chicken, more yeah. importantly. Okay. Let's talk growth. Sure. We're on a mission today, mm -hmm. a mission to help you transform those fluffy little day-old chicks okay. into absolute units. Right. Five times their original weight. Wow. In just one week. Okay. We're okay. here to tell you it's totally doable. It is achievable with the right management. We're talking about taking a 50-gram chick on day one. Right. And hitting a solid 250 grams by day seven. Yeah. It's all about understanding the science. Exactly. Behind those crucial first seven days. Yes. And implementing the right strategy. Absolutely. Think of it like this. We're handing you the keys. Okay. To a high performance chick raising machine. All right. We're about to break down the exact formula, the settings, the fuel. Mm -hmm. Everything you need to optimize that first week and set those chicks on the fast track to growth. It's amazing the impact that this short period has on their entire lifespan. Yeah. Get it right. And you're not just talking about a good first week, but a successful grow out period overall. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so let's dive into the nitty gritty. Okay. Where do we even begin when it comes to maximizing growth in that very first week? It all starts with the environment. Okay. Remember, these chicks are fresh out of their shells. Yeah. And their ability to regulate their own body temperature is still developing. Right. We need to create a space where they're not just surviving, mm -hmm. they're thriving. So we're talking about more than just cranking up oh, the okay. heat, right? Yeah. It's about fine tuning those conditions. Yes. To create the ultimate chick comfort zone. Exactly. Think of it this way. Yeah. If you're cold, you're more likely to huddle up and conserve energy. Right. Chicks are the same way. If they're too cold, they'll huddle together, eat less, and that directly impacts their growth. Makes sense. So how do we find that sweet spot, mm -hmm. that perfect temperature range? Well, before those chicks even set foot, or should I say foot pad, in their new home, Chuckles. we need to preheat the brooding area. I'm talking a solid 24 to 72 hours beforehand, depending on the season and your setup. It's like preheating an oven. Yes. Got to make sure it's nice and toasty for those little buns, <laughs> dater chicks. Precisely. Now, if you're using an external heating system without brooders, yeah. aim for room temperature around 32 degrees Celsius. If you've got brooders, you can dial back the room temperature to 30 degrees and keep a cozy 38 to 40 degrees Celsius directly under the brooders. Okay, so we've got the air temperature dialed in. Right. What about the ground they're walking on? It's not just about looking pretty, right? Absolutely not. Litter is more than just bedding. It's their entire world during those first few days. Okay. And when it comes to litter, there are three magic words to remember. Let's hear it. Clean, dry, and smooth. Clean, dry, smooth. <laughs> Got it. But tell me, what's the reasoning behind this magic formula? Well, think about a chick's natural instincts. In the wild, would they be searching for food in a damp, dirty, and uncomfortable spot? I'm guessing no. Probably not. They'd much rather have a clean and cozy nest to hang out in. Exactly. A chick's energy should be spent on growing, not fighting off potential infections from dirty litter mm -hmm. or dealing with foot problems because of rough surfaces. Right. That's why we want absorbent bedding that stays dry, a smooth texture to protect their little feet. Right. And of course, starting with fresh, clean litter to minimize any risk of disease. It's all about setting them up for success from the ground up. Literally. Yeah. So we've covered the heat. We've got the bedding sorted. Right. What other environmental factors come into play during this crucial first week? Humidity is a big one. Okay. We're aiming for that sweet spot of 50, 60%. Yeah. High humidity is a big no-no. Right. Imagine stepping outside on a humid day. I can imagine that. Feels a bit heavy, doesn't it? It does. Now crank up the heat. Oh. That's what it's like for a chick in a brooding area with high humidity and high temperatures. Yeah. They'd be saying... Exactly. Turn on the AC. Yeah. If they could. It stresses them out, reduces their appetite, and throws a wrench in our growth plans. So keep that humidity in check and everyone's happy. Right, because we want them eating and growing. Exactly. Good airflow is key too, right? I mean, we've all been stuck in this stuffy room and it's not fun. Spot on. We've got to think about air quality in the broader sense. Carbon dioxide, carbon mon monoxide, ammonia... These things build up fast in a broiler house. Right. It's a lot of chickens in a small space. It is. So it's like those chicks are working out in a gym with no ventilation. Kind of. If those levels get too high, it's like they're running a marathon just trying to breathe. Yeah. Our goal is to keep those levels low so their little bodies can focus on what really matters, packing on the grams. 
Okay, so what are the magic numbers we're looking for when it comes to these gases? Right. Give us the specifics. For carbon dioxide, we want to stay below 3,000 parts per million. Okay. Think of it as keeping their air fresh and breathable. Fresh air is good. For carbon monoxide, it's even more critical under 10 parts per million. This one's a silent danger, so proper ventilation is key. Gotcha. And lastly, ammonia, we want that below 10 parts per million as well. A buildup of ammonia can irritate their little respiratory systems, and we don't want any breathing troubles to slow them down. Makes sense. Now we've covered the air they breathe, the ground they walk on, the perfect temperature. Yeah. Anything else we need to think about in this chick utopia we're creating? We can't forget about the lights. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Light. The chicken farmer's secret weapon. You could say that. Light plays a crucial role in their growth and development. Right. On day one, we want to mimic those long summer days. Right. Around 23 hours of light and just a single hour of darkness. Wow, so almost all day. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. We want those chicks up and eating. The light should be bright, too, somewhere between 80 and 100. Lux. Lux, because even chickens need good lighting design. Yeah. But we don't want them up all night every night. Exactly. As the week progresses, we'll gradually decrease those light hours, giving them a bit more darkness each day. Okay. It's all about mimicking those natural day and night cycles, which helps regulate their hormones and encourages healthy growth. Right. By day seven, they should have a solid block of at least six hours of darkness, including a good four hours of uninterrupted shut-eye. So it's not just about keeping the lights on. It's about having a proper light schedule. Yeah. Just like we do. Exactly. It's okay. all connected. Right. Now, speaking of keeping those chicks fueled for growth. Ah, yes. Let's talk food. Yeah. They've got to be hungry after all that growing. Right. How much are these little guys eating during this critical first week? Well, on day one, a chick needs about 17 grams of feed. Okay. That might not sound like a lot to you and me, but it's a feast for a tiny chick. Especially considering they're trying to pack on the pounds. Or should I say, grams. Exactly. And here's the thing. Okay. It's not enough to just provide the feed. Right. We need to make sure they're actually eating it. It's like setting the table but forgetting to call everyone for dinner. Precisely. Yeah. Feeder space is crucial here. Okay. We're talking about making sure every chick has access to the buffet line without having to fight for their spot. Right. If you're using pan feeders, aim for about one meter of feeder space for every 100 birds. So plenty of elbow room for those peckish chicks. Yeah. What about those chain feeders? For those, you'll need slightly less space, about 0.75 meters per 100 birds. Okay. And just like with temperature and ventilation, even distribution is key. Right. We don't want any areas where chicks are overcrowded. Right. Or worse, getting left out of the feeding frenzy. No chick left behind. So we've got our feeders strategically placed, but how do we know if they're actually getting enough to eat? Are we checking for crumbs on their fluff? I wish it were that easy. Mm. A great way to monitor their food intake during those first couple of days is by checking their crops. The crop being that little storage pouch in their neck where the food hangs out before heading to the stomach. You got it. It's like a built-in lunch bag. Right. And feeling those crops can give us valuable insights into how well they're eating. So what are we feeling for? Well, two hours after you've placed those chicks in their new home. Okay. Ideally, about 75% of them should have full crops. Okay. You want it to feel like a little bean bag, nice and plump. Okay, so two hours in, we're feeling for plump little bean bags. 75% is the target. Yeah. What about as the day goes on? By 12 hours, we want to see that number climb to 85% with full crops. Okay. At the 24 hour mark, aim for 95%. Wow. So almost all of them. Yeah. Okay. And by 48 hours, every single chick should have a nice full crop. Those are some excellent benchmarks. Yeah. So it's all about those regular check-ins. Yes. Making sure those crops are filling up and those chicks are on track. It's like running a 247 all-you-can-eat buffet for those little guys. Chuckles, pretty much. And those full crops tell us we're doing a good job. Absolutely. We've covered so much ground today. We have. From temperature and humidity yeah. to litter and lighting. Mm -hmm. Not to mention all those feeding strategies. Right. All important. It's clear that... To get that five times growth in a week takes real attention to detail. It really does. Wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. It's not luck. It's about knowing the science of how chicks develop. Right. And then really applying it carefully. Yeah. Every single thing we've talked about mm -hmm. affects how healthy they are. Right. And in the end, how much they grow. So for our listeners out there yeah. who are ready to use these tips, mm -hmm. what's the main thing you want them to remember okay. when they go back to their broiler houses? I'd say remember those chicks, those 50-gram chicks fresh out of the hatchery. Right. 
they're depending on you mm. to give them the right environment, That's not true. just to survive, right, right, but to really thrive. Yeah. So make sure you're checking on them and adjusting things as needed. Mm. So it's about thinking like a chick. <laughs> yeah. Put yourself in their Whoa. in their little foot pads. You want a comfy <laughs> space that's clean. Of course. With plenty of good food and a chance to rest and get big right. Absolutely. And with the right information. Right. And a bit of effort. Yep. That goal of five times the weight is within reach. It is. Until next time, happy farming.